guys so today we shall be discussing regarding the knee examination how do you normally do a knee examination for a patient right so before we exactly going to the clinical part of how we do the knee examination first of all let us learn the basic anatomy right so we shall apply this anatomy on the patient's knee and then we shall be discussing what are the things we need to examine what are the ligaments we need to examine what are the bony prominences we need to examine and etc right so this is the basic anatomy which you have to watch before you watch the video on the knee exam right so what is the basic thing as you can see in this picture over here right so this region is your thigh this is your patella and this is your leg region right so this is from the lateral aspect this is a lateral view now what is this white color thing which i have highlighted over here guys this white color thing is nothing but your iliac crest okay this white color thing over here this is your iliac bone the iliac crest now from the iliac crest right from the iliac crest all the way you have got you have got a fibrous sheath right you have got a fibrous sheath that is coming all the way down and attaching to the tibia which tibia the lateral surface of the tibia right so this is called as iliotibial band because it extends all the way from the iliac crest to the tibia so you call this band as iliotibial band what band do you call this guys you call this particular band as ilio tibial band right so this particular band is called as ilio tibial band now another important thing you need to know here is that from the anterior side from the anterior side this is how the picture looks so this is the anterior surface of the knee and when i'm flexing my knee this is how the picture looks right when i'm standing still this is how the picture looks and when i'm flexing my knee this is how the picture looks right now look at this picture from the anterior view now what are the things you can appreciate here guys what are the things you can appreciate here is that within your thigh right within your thigh mainly talking about the anterior compartment of the thigh it means see all this compartment is the anterior compartment of the thigh all this is the posterior compartment of the thigh so from the anterior compartment of the thigh you basically have got four important muscles okay one s shaped muscle you call that as sartorius okay so let me write it down one s shaped muscle you call it as sartorius sartorius after that you have got three large muscles that is why you call them as vastus muscles vastus means large one is located laterally so i call it as vastus lateralis one is located in the center so i call it as vastus intermedius and one is located medially so i call it as vastus medialis right so you have got vastus muscles what are the vastus muscles guys what are the muscles one is vastus lateralis one is vastus medialis another one is vastus intermedius now how many muscles are there here in total yeah so how many muscles do we find 1 2 3 4 so all these four muscles together you called as quadriceps muscles right all these four muscles together you called as quadriceps muscles so all these four muscles together they join like this look here very carefully all these four muscles together they join like this and after joining what is going to happen to this patient is that look here all of them they join all the quadriceps muscles join together to form a tendon so this green color thing is called as a tendon right so all these four quadriceps muscles they join together to form a tendon so this is a tendon of the quadriceps muscles so you call this tendon as quadriceps tendon what is the name of this tendon guys so this tendon over here is called as quadriceps tendon quadriceps tendon clear so far now what is going to happen with this quadriceps tendon look here this quadriceps tendon will continue down like this look here this quadriceps tendon is continuing down all the way 
from where it is overlapping and going this quadriceps tendon is passing over the patella now as this quadriceps tendon is passing over the patella now you should not call this as quadriceps tendon rather you have to call this as patellar ligament right so you have got the quadriceps muscles quadriceps muscles all of them join together to form quadriceps tendon and this quadriceps tendon passes over the patella to form patellar ligament it means it continues down as patellar ligament the continuation of quadriceps tendon is nothing but your patellar ligament so this guy over here this one is called as your patellar ligament this guy over here is called as a patellar ligament so what are the important things you need to know one is your quadriceps muscle right going into quadriceps tendon and the next one is your patellar ligament clear now this is the patellar ligament which comes down all the way like this it comes down all the way like this and it inserts to a specific bony prominence on the tibia on the tibia bone if you palpate you have got a bony prominence so that bony prominence on the tibia you call it as tibial tuberosity right so here i have got a tibial tuberosity if you want you can palpate on your leg as well you will find a tibial tuberosity so to that tibial tuberosity what is attaching your patellar ligament is attaching there so your patellar ligament is attaching to tibial tuberosity tuberosity now why am i so interested to know all these things the reason is you have got a very good clinical point over here guys that when you kneel down right when you kneel down and mop the floor let us say you have got a very big house and you are kneeling down and mopping the floor completely and daily so what is happening your tibial tuberosity is under constant pressure your tibial tuberosity is touching the floor so there is a constant friction when there is a constant friction your tibial tuberosity is going to inflame right it will get inflamed then what will happen that inflammation that inflammation of tibial tuberosity is going to ascend up it will go up so what is there on the top here you have got your patellar ligament even patellar ligament will also undergo inflammation and that will ascend up and what is there on the top here quadriceps tendon so even your quadriceps tendon is also going to undergo inflammation right and finally quadriceps tendon is attached to your quadriceps muscles so finally the patient is going to have inflammation of his quadriceps muscles so this this part which i have explained you right so this condition you call it as housemaid's knee right housemaid's knee clergyman's knee so there are different important things which you need to know okay now okay that is one clinical point what is housemaid's knee you know when you are under constant stress right when you are kneeling down we are rubbing the friction so when you are under constant stress for example when you are kneeling down your tibial tuberosity gets frictioned with the floor down and that leads to a problem called as housemaid's knee right so what is this ligament because why why am i so interested to know about all these things are when we do the knee examination we actually check for all these muscles if there is any pain if there is any inflammation we check for quadriceps tendon we we start palpating the quadriceps tendon we start pressing the quadriceps tendon to to detect if there is any pain that the patient is experiencing the same goes with the patellar ligament and tibial tuberosity we even palpate the tibial tuberosity to see if the patient is having pain so why why do you see if if i have a pain in the tibial tuberosity patellar ligament and quadriceps tendon and so on so what can you infer from this what i can infer is that the patient's entire thigh region is inflamed which is also called as your housemate's knee now while doing knee examination i will also look for few important ligaments what are those few important ligaments and by the way this is your tibia this is your fibula fibula is always on the lateral side so it means this is the lateral side this is the medial side on the lateral side i have got a ligament this ligament is called as a collateral ligament and this collateral ligament is attaching the femur bone and also the tibia bone 
right so it is attaching the femur and tibia on the lateral side so this ligament you call it as collateral ligament but it is on the lateral side i call it as lateral collateral ligament what is the name of this ligament guys this ligament is lateral lateral collateral ligament so this is one of the most important ligament which all of you have to know in the same way if there is a ligament on the medial side there right so this this entire ligament which you can see this is called as your medial collateral ligament medial collateral ligament so what is an important thing about your lateral and medial collateral ligament right so even while doing a knee examination we palpate this medial collateral ligament we palpate the lateral collateral ligament and see if there is any injury right so these are the things which we basically do in a knee examination whenever you look at the knee examination so these are the basic things which we mainly concentrate about the knee examination okay now when i'm flexing the knee so basically your knee is like this straight but when you are flexing the knee this is how the picture looks when you are flexing the knee you can additionally see two more important ligaments over here see this is you know it this is called medial collateral ligament and this is called as lateral collateral ligament but what are these two ligaments inside keep in keep one thing keep one thing in mind guys that see this part is on the medial side this is called as a medial condyle of the femur this is called as a medial condyle of femur this is called medial condyle right medial epicondyle of the femur in the same way this part over here this is called as the lateral condyle lateral condyle of the femur now you can see very well you can see very well that a ligament is attached on the lateral condyle of the femur and this is coming anteriorly down here see this ligament is attached to the lateral condyle and it is coming anteriorly front here to the anterior side so if it is coming to the anterior side you call it as anterior cruciate ligament so if i ask what is the origin and insertion of anterior cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament originates from the lateral side and comes anteriorly anterior to tibia or anterior cruciate ligament is also called as acl right i hope all of you know what is acl so this part over here this is called as your acl acl stands for anterior cruciate ligament now in the same way in the same way you can see another ligament that is attached to the medial condyle and is that ligament coming anteriorly or it is going back obviously it is going back of the tibia origin from the medial condyle insertion to the posterior side of the tibia so posteriorly it is going so it is called as posterior cruciate ligament or i can also call this ligament as pcl i can also call this ligament as pcl so there are two important ligaments guys one is acl and pcl there are many many different tests that are based on acl how to check for acl injury how to check for pcl injury so we shall be discussing each and every test how to detect if there is any acl tear or to detect if there is any pcl tear right so this is all you need to know regarding the leg region regarding the examination of the knee so whenever you are doing any kind of knee examination this is the normal knee right this is the joint of the knee so you have to flex the knee at 90 degrees see this is the 90 degree angle this is a 90 degree angle so when i'm flexing the knee at 90 degrees i can open up and show all the ligaments here so whenever you are examining the knee for any kind of bursae or any kind of ligaments you always have to examine the knee by flexing it at 90 degrees right so this is something the basic which you basically have to know regarding the knee examination part right now let us continue with the clinical part of how we are exactly going to deal with all of these things and check 
whether all of these things are normal in the patient or not. So now we will be looking at the knee examination. Whenever you are doing knee examination for a patient, you need to keep four things in your mind. The first thing is general inspection of the both lower limbs. After the inspection, you need to palpate the both lower limbs. As I already told you, you will palpate the tibial tuberosity, the patella, the quadriceps tendon, the collateral ligaments and etc. And third important thing is, you need to tell the patient to do some exercises to know the neurovascular status of the patient. And finally, the range of motions. So, the first thing will always be inspection, next palpation, third it is neurovascular status and fourth it is range of motion. When it comes to inspection, what do you inspect? You inspect the skin, you inspect the soft tissues, you inspect the bony part, you also inspect the normal gait of the person. First of all, let's inspect the skin. Look at the patient's both lower limbs. Look at the discoloration. If Do you find any kind of discoloration in both the lower limbs or both of them share the same color? So in this patient, both of the limbs share the same color. There is no discoloration on any one side of the limb. Second important skin finding is look for the wounds near the knee, above the knee and below the knee. Okay. So if there are any wounds, then take those wounds into consideration. Okay, so right now patient is not having any wounds and also examine for any previous scars, right? Previous scars on the leg, on the patella and all. So knee examination has to be done. The skin examination has to be done from the anterior view as well as the posterior view. After that, we go for the soft tissue examination. In the soft tissue examination, we basically look at the patient's both leg, whether they are symmetrical or asymmetrical. Look at the patient's both limbs. Look whether if there is any swelling only on one side. But right now, this patient has got both limbs with a normal texture. There is no swelling. Second thing, look for muscle atrophy. If there is any atrophy of the leg. But as far as this patient is concerned, both of his legs are symmetric completely. Now, after these are the soft tissue examinations. After skin, we do the soft tissue examinations. And after soft tissue examinations, we look at the bony part. Now, in the bony part, the first thing which we look is the length. Look if both the legs are symmetrical in length. Because there are some conditions where the right leg might be little bit longer or shorter compared to the left leg. So the first thing is the length examination. So in this patient, the length of both the limbs is symmetrical. The second thing is how the position of the leg is placed. There are two types of positions. One is genuvarum. This is genuvarum. And the next position is genuvalgus. So genuvarum you see in case of rheumatoid arthritis and genu valgus you see in case of osteoarthritis. So right now as far as this patient is concerned, he is not having any genu varum or genu valgus. So this is the, called as a normal neutral position of the leg. So now let us examine the gait of the patient. Now while examining the gait of the patient, the first thing we need to look for varus thrust. So this is varus thrust, the lateral bending of the left knee as you can see the lateral bending of the left knee is called as varus thrust. So when there is overweight on one side of the leg, this varus thrust appears in the patient. So this is a type of gait. The second type of gait is flexed knee gait. So this is the flexed knee gait where the patient is bending his left limb forward and then he is walking. So this is called as a flexed knee gait. And the third type of gait is antalgic gait where whenever the patient is walking, he will have very very severe pain in his leg. So if a patient is having a flexed knee gait as I told you, it indicates tight Achilles tendon or tight hamstring muscles. All of you know the Achilles tendon and the hamstring muscles are located posteriorly. So when the Achilles tendon and hamstring muscles are completely tight, contracted, 
So in this case, the patient will have the flexed knee gait. So after doing the general inspection, the next thing we do is the palpation. Now when you are palpating, the same things again. First of all, you have to look at the bony tissues. And after that, you have to concentrate on the soft tissues. Now, as I already told you, regarding the bony tissues, few very important things are, first of all, let me draw the muscles over here. So, patient is having a muscle all the way like this. This muscle, which is S-shaped, this is called as sartorius. Next, we have got a muscle in the center. This muscle is called as vastus intermedius. Next, we have got a muscle medially. This is called as vastus medialis. And finally, we have got another muscle laterally. This is called as vastus lateralis. So, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, as well as vastus medialis. All these muscles, they join together in this way. All these muscles, they join together like this. Now, all these muscles, once they join together, they have got a common tendon here. All these muscles, they share a common tendon like this. Now, this tendon is called as quadriceps tendon. As you can see here, this is quadriceps tendon. Now, this quadriceps tendon passes all over, over the patella. Now, once this quadriceps tendon passes over the patella, now you call this tendon as patellar ligament. Now, this patellar ligament comes down all the way into the leg and all of you can know that here you have got tibial tuberosity. So, this point exactly is the tibial tuberosity. So, this is the tibial tuberosity of the patient. So, all these tendons, I mean the patellar ligament comes and inserts to this tibial tuberosity. So, till here, till here, we have got the quadriceps tendon and we have got the patellar ligament and we have got all the quadriceps muscles over here. Now, the next important thing is that we have got a ligament on the lateral side like this. This is called as lateral collateral ligament. So, this ligament on the lateral side is called lateral collateral ligament. And we have got a ligament on the medial side in this way. And this ligament is called as medial collateral ligament. So, we shall be palpating the lateral collateral ligament. We shall be palpating the medial collateral ligament. We shall also palpate and check the quadriceps tendon as well as the patellar ligament and finally we shall check the condition of the patellar bone. Now coming to the bony part, coming to the bony part we have to palpate the bony part. The bony part which you can see here is the tibial tuberosity as well as the patella. Now how do you palpate the patella? Move this patella laterally and medially like this. Move this patella laterally and palpate the lateral border and ask the patient if there is any pain. Move the patella medially in this way towards my side and palpate medially. Ask the patient if there is any pain. And rotate the patella in this way so that you can feel whether are there any kind of crunching sounds in the patella. So any kind of crunching sounds in the patella might indicate patellar fracture. Next. Palpate the tibial tuberosity of the patient because this is the point where the patellar ligament fixes. So, if a patient is having housemaid knee, then he will have inflammation of tibial tuberosity. And this inflammation can ascend up and end up in these quadriceps muscle leading to the inflammation of the quadriceps muscle. Next, palpate the quadriceps tendon of the patient. After quadriceps tendon, palpate the patellar tendon of the patient. After that, palpate the patella of the patient. So, what are the things we have discussed in palpation? We have discussed, first you need to palpate the quadriceps tendon, then palpate the patellar ligament, and then palpate the tibial tuberosity, and then move the patella laterally and medially. Laterally and medially. Move the patella laterally and palpate the lateral side and move the patella medially and palpate the medial side. Next, place your fingers on the patella and move round about and see if there are any kind of crunching sounds that you can feel. This is the bony part examination. Now coming to the soft tissue examination, I have already told you 
that you have to palpate the quadriceps tendon patellar ligament and the quadriceps muscles also so this is the soft tissue examination which we have also done the next important thing is that exactly at this point exactly at this point here just inferior medial part of your patella exactly here you have got insertion of three different muscles one is called sartorius another one is called semitendinosus and the third one is called as gracilis so sartorius semitendinosus and gracilis all of them join together and at this location they join together so this is called as pes and serine bursa so if the patient is having inflammation of sartorius semitendinous as well as gracilis when you press this region patient will have pain in the pes anserin bursa so right now patient is not complaining of any pain in the pes anserin bursa next next soft tissue examination is palpate the lateral collateral ligament next palpate the medial collateral ligament and one very important thing all this soft tissue examination quadriceps tendon patellar ligament medial collateral ligament lateral collateral ligament you have to palpate only and only by bending the knee or by flexing the knee like this right so you have flexed the knee now you have to palpate the quadriceps tendon now you have to palpate the patellar ligament now you palpate the lateral collateral ligament now you palpate the medial collateral ligament so this is how you do a soft tissue examination by bending the knee at 90 degrees but when you are palpating the bone you need not to bend the knee you can keep the leg in a neutral position and then palpate the bony part last soft tissue examination which we going to discuss is put your both hands on back so this region here this region on the back which we, where you can see my hand where my hand is resting here so this region is called as a popliteal region so right now with my both the hands i am palpating the popliteal region like this when i am palpating the popliteal region i can feel if there is any kind of popliteal cyst or baker cyst that has outpouched so let's revise what we have talked before the first thing is inspection we are done with the inspection second thing is palpation we are also done with the palpation the third thing is neurovascular status when it comes to the neurovascular status you need to know the motor function of the leg you need to know the sensory function of the leg you even need to feel the pulses so these three things together constitute the neurovascular function now when it comes to the motor part when it comes to the motor part if the patient is able to flex the knee properly right it means the flexors are working actively right so there are flexors beneath there are extensors on the top so if the patient is able to flex his knee properly it means the flexors which are located on the posterior side they are working properly so what is the nerve of the posterior compartment of the thigh that is a sciatic nerve it means the patient sciatic nerve is responsible for knee flexion and patient has flexed his knee which means his sciatic nerve on the posterior side is working well second important thing is that now i'll tell the patient to extend his knee when he is able to extend his knee it means his extensors are working properly and these extensors are located on the anterior surface of the thigh so nerve of the anterior surface of the thigh is your femoral nerve so it means patient's femoral nerve is working properly next i'll tell the patient to dorsiflex his leg now patient is able to dorsiflex when the patient is able to dorsiflex it means the deep peroneal nerve is working well now when i'll ask the patient to plantar flex right it means the tibial nerve is working well dorsiflexion is deep peroneal nerve and plantar flexion is tibial nerve so we have completed to examine the motor system of the patient's leg now we shall be discussing the sensory part when it comes to the sensory part always remember we have to check the sensations on the medial side of the thigh so this is the medial side of the thigh on the medial side of the thigh if the patient can feel the sensation it means patient's which nerve is working well the 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 nerve of the medial side of the thigh is your obturator nerve so the patient's obturator nerve is working well 
In the same way, if the patient can feel sensation from the anterior surface of the thigh, it means his femoral nerve is working well. If the patient can feel sensations from the posterior side of the thigh, back of the thigh, it means his sciatic nerve is working well. And in the same way, if the patient can feel sensations on the dorsum of his foot, it means his peroneal nerve is working well. And if the patient can feel the sensations on the plantar region, it means his tibial nerve is working well. So this is regarding the sensory portion. Coming to the pulses. In the lower limb, we basically have four different pulses. One is the femoral pulse which we check, right? But right now we are examining about the knee, so we are not cared about the femoral pulse. So the next pulse is popliteal pulse. Popliteal pulse, you can feel it in the popliteal fossa. Next, dorsal pedal pulse. Dorsal pedal pulse, you can exactly feel between the junction between the first as well as the second finger exactly here on the bone. So this is the place where you can feel the dorsal pedal artery pulsations. The last pulse is the posterior tibial artery pulse. Where you can feel this pulse behind the medial malleolus exactly at this point you can feel the posterior tibial artery pulse. So if all the things which we have just discussed are working well it means the knee examination the complete lower limb examination is absolutely normal for the patient. So this is all you need to know about the knee examination and the methods how you do the examination of the knee. Thank you for watching the video.